What's up guys, Bellamy Prime here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a complete, from start to finish, guide on Hiram gear. Hiram gear, Hiram, Harambe, whatever it is you want to call it, we're doing a complete guide on everything you need to know about Hiram. Now, in the light of the most recent announcement from Gamigo about Archage Unchained, I would imagine a lot of you are here because of that, in anticipation for that, and you want to learn a little bit about what you know, Hiram is if you haven't played since it's been released or anything like that. But for those of you who haven't already, if you're planning on starting on that server or if you're just a new or returning player and you're going to come back to legacy servers right now, I highly suggest going out, going over and checking out my approaching max level in the Archage guide. It will give you some tips and tricks about what you should do when you're approaching max level and how to transition into your Hiram grind as smoothly as possible and that will lead into this video which is just going to be how to acquire that Hiram gear, where's the best places to farm, what's the best way to get your Hiram drops, what's the best way to get the right stats on them, the best way to awaken them and how you should be doing each of these things. So by the end of this video you should have a pretty good understanding of what you need to be doing with all things Hiram and you should be going into whatever you're doing whether it's Archage Unchained or just starting new fresh on Legacy or re-rolling your gear, whatever it is, you should be going into that with a pretty good understanding of the most effective and efficient way of getting into your Hiram grind. So without any further ado, we're going to jump straight into the video. Alright, so first things first, we want to find our Tier 1 base drops for our Hiram gear. So we need the drops themselves, right, before we can start feeding them and synthesizing them and awakening them to higher grades and into the beautiful amazing gear that it becomes in the end. So we need our drops to begin with. Now to get those we want to find these guys you can see on screen here. Abyssal Legion mobs. Now there's a bunch of different variants of these. There's the elite versions and then there's the base non-elite versions. If you're a new player and you're only just fresh like level 50, 55 there somewhere I highly suggest just farming the base versions because it will take you more often than not unless you're doing it in a small group. It will take you a lot more time to kill the elite mobs and although they have higher drop rates for the hero gear it just is more efficient for you to be farming the uh the non-elite versions especially if you're solo so i suggest farming them but these guys are going to drop your base hero pieces the zones in which you will find these guys the ones that can drop you your tier one versions are calm lands nuimari Merkala, which is the zone we're in here Heedmar, and then we have Diamond Shores and Golden Ruins. Now, I will point out that the Diamond Shores and Golden Ruins zone specifically have a war rotation. This means that they rotate between a war time when PvP can occur and a peace time where PvP cannot occur. Now, obviously, if it's during peace time, it's going to be safe for you to farm there because other players can't come and attack you. However, if it's during war time, you have a higher drop rate by default. The zone itself will give you a drop rate buff during war, meaning that everything you kill has a better chance of dropping here on pieces. So if you're in a rush and you really want to get that extra drop rate and you're not worried about get potentially getting attacked, although I highly doubt you will unless you're playing on Unchained and everyone is farming their Hiram drops, Diamond Shores and Golden Ruins will be the way to go for that extra drop rate. Otherwise, I suggest coming to one of the southern zones and farming in those for your tier 1 drops but when you get said drops they will look like this now we have six different way things that can drop from these mobs we have the unidentified plate armor the unidentified cloth the unidentified leather and then we have a set of two hand weapons a set of one hand weapons which i don't have on me right now and an instrument which is also unidentified so we have the three different types of armor, the cloth, plate, and the leather, which can drop each of their seven respective pieces. So for the leather, for example, we can, when we unseal this drop, we have a chance to get a cap, a jerkin, breeches, fists, boots, guards, or a belt. So that goes the same with each of the armor pieces. We then have the two-hander, which has a chance to drop each of the two-hand weapons. Then there's the one-hand variant, which, like I said, we don't have, but can drop each of the one-hand variants, as well as a bow. So if you're a bow, if you're looking for a bow, you're looking at the one-handers. And then we have the instrument, so we get a flute or a loot from that. So we'll unseal one of these here, and we'll show you. So we'll unseal a leather here, and we can see that we get we got a leather cap. So once we unseal the cap. We get the piece itself, it will drop at the grand grade, and this is a tier 1 Hiram Guardian cap. 
So essentially what you want to be doing is you want to be farming these mobs until you get all seven of your respective armor pieces and your weapons and all your loadout basically from each of these different drops. So once we have our base pieces, we need to start thinking about upgrading them and synthesizing them to higher tiers because although they're quite good as they are, we can make these pieces much, much, much stronger. So the way we go about upgrading these pieces is by feeding other pieces of Hiram gear into the ones we actually want in order to synthesize them into a higher tier. So unlike in the past in Arc Age or in other MMOs, where you may have to regrade items to get them higher or just have them drop at a higher tier. All Hiram will drop at the grand tier and we're able to synthesize them up. So the way we do this is we go down here into our bag, we have a button called gear upgrade. We go into here, so we click that open and we will get this UI right here. So what you wanna do is then right click the piece you want to tier up or synthesize. So for this, we're going to choose our Hiram Guardian hood and then it places it into this window here. And now we can see it'll show us the stats that's on it. And we can see that in our bag, these different pieces here are lit up, which means they're available to be fed. So we can right click them and it will place them into this materials window here, which will allow us to feed them into the Hiram Guardian hood itself. Now we can see here that there's an XP bar. And once we fill this XP bar to the end we will get an increase in the Hiram Guardian hoods grade so we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna we're not we don't quite have enough pieces here to feed it to the next grade so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna unseal some plate pieces because we don't actually want plate but we have all these plate pieces here we don't know what to do with them until now we feed them into our cloth piece so we're gonna take our hood and we're gonna you know, put these two plate pieces in. It doesn't quite push us to the next grade, so we're gonna put one more in, and we can see here that it will, after we click synthesize, will take us from grand to the rare grade. And it's, you can see it's gonna cost us a little bit of labor and a little bit of gold. We're gonna head, gonna go ahead and press synthesize. And we can see here that our hood is now at the rare grade. So we can do this up to the celestial grade, at which point we will have to awaken it to take it further. But before we go into any of that awakening or anything like that, we need to explain the effects that are on the piece of gear. So if we see here on our Hiram Guardian cloth hood, we have a synthesis effect at the bottom of the piece, which is in the green text there, which gives us spirit received melee damage reduction, 0.6% and resilience now this hood actually to my surprise is actually a perfect hood for say a healer but let's pretend like we're a mage and we don't actually want spirit on this piece we actually really need intelligence because that's going to be the source of our damage but we actually want to keep received melee damage and resilience but you know it doesn't have the right stats so is this piece you know worthless do we throw it away or defeat it into another piece no we can actually re-roll this so if we go into our gear upgrade Thing that we were in earlier and we click replace effects we can place the hood into that and then since we already upgraded it one time from grand to rare we have a change attempt in the bank so we can see on the piece itself it says remaining change attempts one that's because we upgraded it once which gave us a free change attempt so we we're able to try and replace the spirit when we roll this, it will have a chance to change to one of the other stats in the stat pool. So we can have a chance to hit stamina, intelligence, um, strength, or agility. But we want intelligence, so we're going to hit replace here and we're going to try and see if we can hit intelligence. Now, unfortunately, we didn't hit intelligence, so that's a bit of a bummer, but we hit strength. Now, you have two options here. You can hit confirm which will confirm the change from spirit to strength, or we can hit cancel, which will keep it remaining as a spirit piece. Now we're just gonna hit confirm here just to show you guys how that changes. So we can see here, we got the confirm spirit to strength change. Now on the piece, we have strength 42. Now that's gone cool all, but we still need intelligence, right? So is the piece done? Can we not feed it any further? No, we can feed it another grade and hopefully get another reroll. So we're gonna unseal some more plate pieces here because like I said, 
We don't need plate pieces. We're not thinking about going plate. So we're going to unseal a couple of these pieces. Now, I will point out that each time you go up in a grade, it will require more pieces to feed into it to get to the next grade. So let's see here. If we put one, two, three pieces, four, five pieces, five pieces of plate, and we have enough to get to the next grade. It's going to cost us 20 labor per piece and a little bit of extra gold this time. But we can feed it here and we can see here that it's going to give us plus one change attempt. It's also going to boost a bit of the stats because we're upgrading the gear as well. So we're going to synthesize that in and we're going to get an arcane piece. So now that it's arcane, we're able to do one more free reroll. So we can open up here, go to our replace effects, throw in the hood and we can make sure we select strength. And then we can do another replace and hopefully we hit intelligence. Now, again, unfortunately, we didn't hit intelligence. We only hit agility. So it doesn't really matter which one we have because if we don't have intelligence, it's unfortunate that this piece is pretty crappy without it. So we're gonna try one more time. We're gonna open a bunch of plate pieces and hopefully we're able to feed this to the next grade and get another reroll. And hopefully with that reroll, we can hit intelligence. If not, it's going to be looking a bit dire because this piece isn't going to be great for us as a mage. So we may have to start again. Give me one, two, three, four, five, six plate pieces. It's not going to quite get us to the end unless we get a bonus proc. And we didn't. All right, one more plate piece. All right, no more plate. Okay, we'll put, put in a random cloth piece as well. So we can see took us eight pieces this time to get to the next grade so we're going to go ahead and synthesize that we'll get it to the next grade heroic we can see here that we procced additional xp which is a chance to happen every time you're feeding which is a nice little bonus so we have another change attempt here we can go to replace effects and we can hit this one more time and hopefully hit intelligence now we didn't hit intelligence stamina isn't bad for a mage because it just gives hp so we're going to keep that but for the most part we're at the heroic grade now we've upgraded it three times and as you can see as we went through each grade it actually got more and more expensive to get through the grades it was requiring more pieces more labor and more gold each time so as this progresses it's going to get harder and harder and it's going to take more and more xp so i suggest that if by this grade, by the heroic grade, if you don't have all three stats that you want. So for this piece specifically, we already had received melee reduction and resilience, which are two very good auxiliary pieces, uh, sorry, auxiliary stats, but we didn't have the main stat. And if I don't hit the stats that I want by heroic, I suggest starting over. Because at this point, it just gets a little bit too difficult to roll the correct um, stat. And unless you got a stat that you're kind of happy with, but maybe you'll hit a better stat down the line as you're upgrading, then it's fine to go past heroic. But I suggest that you don't go past heroic unless you have all three stats that you have perfect. If you don't have all three stats perfect, I suggest opening, oh, that's not cloth. I suggest opening another cloth piece until you have another piece that you want to feed. Say we needed boots. We see this piece, eh, you know, it doesn't have very good rolls on it to start with. You know, it's received magic and received range. We don't really care about that. And we're not a healer, so we don't want spirit. Let's try another piece. Um, so we got some pants that have received melee, which is all right. And stamina, not very good. Let's try again. Let's see what we hit. All right, so we got another pair of pants. Now this has received magic, strength, and max health. Now that's really bad, so we're going to try again. Let's hit some gloves. Strength, shield defense, penetration rate, and received range damage. Now... See, this is where the RNG kind of comes into it and it gets quite painful. So, you know, getting the right pieces and things like that can be quite difficult. But this piece here, that's a heroic. Say we don't want to use that. It's not a complete waste because we can take it and we can say, you know, we want to try and feed these shoes and we want to try and re-roll them to get the right stats before heroic. We can just feed this into it. And although it won't push it all the way to heroic, it will skip two grades completely so we'll go straight to arcane and get quite close to going heroic so we're not completely wasting the xp that we used before we can feed it back into a new piece although it will cost a labor and some gold you can feed it into the next piece and kind of push it in until you force the pieces to get the right stats that you want for your build so 
Although this process can be quite painful to do if you're not getting good RNG and you're getting bad stats, it will be more painful if you do go into the higher grades because it will end up costing you more gold and more labor just for each reroll. So I suggest not going anywhere past heroic unless you have at least two out of the three stats that you want on your piece. So feed it to heroic, get your rerolls. Hopefully by then you get the stats you want and then we can progress past this point. So once you've acquired your hero piece with the right stats that you want for your build, we then have to begin the long process of feeding the pieces upgrades and then awakening them into the other tiers. So we have four tiers in total, including the first tier that we drop at. Obviously the fourth and last tier that we have available in the game right now is the best and we wanna aim for that. So how do we do that? Well, we have to feed each tier up to their maximum respective grade. So for example, our tier one can go to a maximum grade of Celestial. Once it's at Celestial, you can feed it all the way to 100% synthesis, but it cannot go up to the next grade. Once we get to this point, we can awaken it to the next tier. So at this grade, we have, at, at this tier, we're a Hiram Guardian weapon, right? At the next tier, it will become Radiant. The tier above that, it will become Brilliant and the tier above that, it will become glorious. So we have the base tier, the radiant, the brilliant, and then the glorious. But we're just gonna refer to these as tier one through four because it just makes things a lot easier and you don't won't get confused because it's super easy to remember the order. So how do we progress our gear from tier one through to tier four? Now, the easiest way to do this is to farm infusions, which drop from different mobs around the game as well as from quest rewards and things like that. We'll speak more about infusions later in the video, but we want to feed each of our pieces to their maximum grade and then awaken them to the next tier and then rinse and repeat. We then feed it again to its maximum tier and then awaken it and then so on and so forth. So I have made a few super easy illustrations to kind of show you guys how you will need to progress through each of these tiers. So on the first tier here, we can see that we have our tier one version of a sword right in front of us here, which is grand, which is what grade it will drop at. At tier one, the maximum grade we can feed it to is the celestial grade. As you can see on the left of the screen here, I've left a list of the grades in order from worst to best. We can see from tier one, we start at grand, we feed it all the way through rare, arcane, heroic, unique, up to celestial. Once it's celestial, we can use a Hiram Awakening Scroll which you can see on the right hand side here. We use 10 of those and 300 labor and we have an, a, we have a chance to upgrade to the next tier. Now, I'm gonna switch over into game here just to show you each, um, show you how these scrolls work. So we have we have the scrolls in question here, the Hiram Awakening scrolls. We can see if we right click them here, it will open up a window for us in the gear upgrade under Awakening. And I also have a Celestial Tier 1 Hiram piece here. It's a melee piece. It's got resilience, max health and strength. So three really good rolls. So this piece is worth upgrading. So we can see here, if we throw this in the window, we can see what will be the results if we do in fact succeed in awakening this piece. So we will get a Radiant Hiram Guardian Fists, which is the tier two. We can see here we have a 10% success rate with a bonus success rate of 5%. Now all this 5% means is that every time you fail an upgrade, it will increase your chances for the next upgrade chance or next upgrade attempt, I should say. So I failed on these fists once before. If I were to hit awaken here, I would roll. I would have a 15% chance of upgrading to tier two. If it failed the next attempt, I would have 20% chance and then 25 and then 30% until you eventually upgrade it. And then you will get your Radiant Hiram Guardian fists at rare grade as a result. So that's how the awakening process itself works. Once we awaken, we will get our Radiant Hiram Fist. Then we will begin to progress through the tier two grades. So back to our illustration here, we can see that we go from Grand, we feed it all the way through to Celestial, and then we awaken it. Once we've awakened it, we then move on to pushing our way through tier two. So we have our next illustration for tier two here. On the grades on the side, you can see that we will, at tier two, once we've awakened, we will begin at the rare grade, and then we have to push it all the way up to the divine grade, before we can awaken it to the next tier. So we can see here we got the Radiant Hiram Guardian Sword at Rare. We have to push that through all the way to Divine. 
then once we reach that we can use a new scroll called a radiant here in my awakening trolls except this time we will need 25 of that scroll for an attempt and the same amount of labor if we switch over here in game we see that i have said here i'm awakening scroll i have i don't have 25 of them so i can't actually pop this attempt but we can see that I also have some divine radiant harem pieces. So for example, if we were to do this jerkin, we can see here that it has a base success rate of 10%. Again, we don't have any bonus success rate because we haven't tried awakening this piece yet. So we've had no fails, so we don't have any bonus success rate. But if we were to awaken this and it was successful, we would result in a brilliant harem guardian jerkin, which would be a tier three. So we can move over here to our tier three illustration and we can see that once we awaken to tier three, like we so in game our piece will be unique so on the left hand side here we can see that at tier 3 we have to go from unique push through celestial divine and then to epic once we reach epic we can then use a brilliant hero awakening scroll to upgrade to tier 4 hopefully so once we get these scrolls you will have to use 50 of said scrolls to upgrade a piece unfortunately I don't have any pieces on me to, to show in the window, but once you get these pieces, you'll be able to attempt to upgrade. It'll be the same deal, a success rate of 10%, and then an additional 5% for each fail you've had in the past. We can show over here in our illustration, you will result in a epic tier four, glorious Hiram Guardian, whatever your piece is. In this case, we're showing a sword. At that point, we can then feed it from epic all the way up to mythic which is the second highest grade in the game and your resulting item, whether it's a piece of armor or a weapon, your glorious hero guardian, whatever, in this case, a sword at mythic is actually one of the best pieces of whatever slot that is in the game. So this sword here, completely untempered, ungemmed because it's just an example, but a very, very strong weapon of choice. And although it's quite a grind to get it, it doesn't cost a lot of gold, just a, just a fair bit of time and labor and effort. So one thing I will point out, we'll jump back over here in game, is when you're upgrading these, each time you use a scroll, if we open this here and we show, we can see here that we have a crystallization chance. Now that means that when we attempt to awaken it, if it fails, it not only can just fail and not go up, it can basically catastrophically fail and become crystallized. Now, crystallize is not a broken piece of gear. All that crystallized means is that you cannot attempt to awaken it until you fix that crystallization. Now, how do we fix the crystallization? Well, there's a couple ways to get decrystallization scrolls, but the easiest way to get a decrystallization scroll is from the honor shop for 10,000 honor. So if we get a crystallize, we can remove it with this. I will also point out that you can get these off the cash shop in certain boxes. So if that's what you're into, then you can go ahead and find those there. And an additional thing that I would like to point out is that when you're upgrading these, there is ways to get resplendent scrolls of your respective tiers. So we can get a resplendent version of the, the tier one scroll, the tier two scroll, and the tier three scroll. Now, the way to do this is you have to get the respective rune scribe quill now i'm looking on the auction house here because this is the easiest way to show all three of them and what they look like but you can acquire these through a mixture of the prestige shop and the cash shop or just from other players on the auction house which is the most simple way to grab them but we can see here we have the rune scribe quill which is the base one this one will convert 50 of our base hero awakening scrolls into a resplendent version of the scroll which will have a 50% chance of upgrading and no chance to crystallize. So if you don't want to be spending gold or honor on decrystallization scrolls, then you want to be using these quills. And I will point out that it is very worth using the RuneScribe quill for the scroll at tier one. At the higher grades, it gets a little bit more costly and not so worth because the scrolls are so hard to farm. You're just better off not using them in my opinion. But if you don't want to risk crystallization, then using these quills is very, very good. So then we can see we have the Radiant Scroll, which is the tier two one, has its respective quill, which is use 100 of the Radiant Hiram Awakening Scrolls. So 100 of these yellow scrolls. And you can get the Resplendent one, which acts the same, stops the chance for crystallization, has a lot stronger chance of going up. And then we have the Brilliant Rune Scribe Quill, which uses 150 Brilliant Hiram Awakening Scrolls and is the same deal, has a higher chance of success and will prevent crystallization. So if you wanna grind a little bit harder for the scrolls to prevent the chance of crystallization and spend a little bit of gold on the quills, however you're buying them, that's cool. I personally don't use them 
past tier one. I like to like you know the, these quills are just a hundred gold on the auction house, and farming the base here on Awakening Scrolls is actually super easy and really fast to do. So using a tier one is extremely worth it in my opinion. But just throwing that information out there so you guys are aware. So at this point, you may be wondering, okay, cool, we understand how to awaken them but how do we actually feed them through each of the tiers and each of the grades so that we can get to the point where we're ready to awaken them? Do I have to just farm Hiram gear and feed in other pieces? No, there's actually a more sufficient way of feeding your Hiram pieces, which is through infusions. Now you can get a number of different infusions of different qualities throughout the world from different quests and different mobs. And these infusions give different values of XP to whatever you're feeding them into. So let's take this here. We have a Radiant Hiram Guardian Breaches, which is a tier two breaches that's only just freshly been awakened. So it's only rare. Now we have three different kinds of infusions here. We have an unidentified Hiram infusion, a mysterious Hiram infusion, and a Radiant Hiram infusion. Now. Each of these you can see has a labor cost to unseal. So 20 and then 25 and then 40. Obviously the ones that cost more are more difficult to acquire and more costly to open, but they're also better quality of infusions, meaning they'll give more XP. So the unidentified hero infusions, if we unseal them, we will get, we can get anywhere from a grand infusion up to a arcane infusion so let's see if we can grab an arcane so we got a rare infusion and can we get an arcane come on give us an arcane baby there we go so we can get anywhere between a grand to a arcane infusion and if we feed these into our thing we can see the grand gives us 250 xp the rare will give us 300 and the arcane will give us 400 so the better the infusion is, the more XP it will give. We can see here opening the Mysterious Hiram infusions that the second best, the rare, is the lowest that we can get from these ones, meaning that overall opening these is going to give you more value. We can show here that the Heroic infusion, which is available once you start opening Mysterious ones, will give you 700 XP, which is quite the jump from the 400 XP that the, the Arcane version. And then obviously the Radiant Hiram infusion, the the best one of the bunch is going to give us even better options so we can get anywhere from a heroic which is the lowest tier available in these and see if we can hit a better one okay so we got a unique which is the second best one and I, the celestial ones are quite rare let's we'll see if we can hit them in like two more unlikely though okay we didn't hit it but we can get a celestial one so we can see here that the arcane one gives a thousand and I'm assuming the celestial one probably gives like 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 somewhere there off the top of my head. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's just open a couple just to see if we can hit one until I run out of labor. They are pretty far and few between, but when you get them, they are a super nice boost and I highly doubt that. Ah, uh, we got one. Okay, nice. So we got the, we got the celestial infusion. So we'll chuck that in and it'll give us 1,400. So there you go, the celestial ones are quite hefty. So we can see here the unidentified hero infusions, although they're still worth opening because you'll need as much XP as you can get. Um, they give slightly lesser infusions. The uh, mysterious hero infusions is quite decent in the middle. You, these will be the ones you get the most of because there's a lot of different sources from them. And then if you're able to get as many as possible, the Radiant Hiram infusions are really going to speed up the process for you because at minimum you're getting Heroic Hiram infusions and at best you can get some here, uh, some Celestial ones which are really juicy. So super good infusions there. And these are going to be what you're primarily going to feed your Hiram gear with. So once, once you're actually done farming all your base pieces, for the most part you won't be feeding your gear with other Hiram pieces that you find you'll be feeding them mostly with infusions like these ones you see here. So we're going to get into where you get all these infusions and the best way to farm them. So let's jump into that real quick. So the number one best way to farm your Hiram infusions to feed your gear, the fastest way possible is to complete the plethora of daily quests around Auroria that you can do every single day that will reward you with either scrolls for your awakening or infusions to feed your gear as fast as possible. We like to call this the world tour, but I'm going to show you guys on screen now every single zone in Aurora that has at least one 
sometimes more quests for Hiram Guardian Awakening Scrolls or Infusions. So depending on the zone, the difficulty of the quest may vary. Some of them are quite difficult, especially to do solo, whereas others are quite easy, although they might take you a bit longer to do. More often than not, the quests are just basic kill quests. Just kill a bunch of mobs and you go get your reward. In other cases, you may have to kill a small boss or something like that, but we're gonna go through and we're just gonna show you where each of these quests can be picked up and show you guys a little bit of the reward that each of them gives but before we do that I will point out to you guys that if you aren't able to solo all of these quests which unless you have quite decent gear and depending on your class you may not be able to solo these quests very easily so I suggest regardless of whether you're geared or not just because it's much faster and much easier I suggest you join your factions daily raids for Hiram quests you'll notice if you keep an eye on your nation chat more often than not you'll hear people you'll see people advertising for Eastern Hiram Mountain and Western Hiram Mountain raids or Hiram raids or whatever it is. Regardless, they're more often than not the, ex the exact same thing. You'll just group up at one of the quest starters, whichever one raid leader decides to start on. You join the raid, go join up, you all run around together, complete the quest together, get your rewards super fast and you can get in, get all of them done and get out in an hour or so as opposed to maybe multiple hours that it might take you to do it alone. So I highly suggest doing that. But as you can see on screen, each of the zones that has one of these quests going from the easiest quests to the more difficult ones are Sun Gold Fields and Exilock. Then we have Reedwind and Diamond Shores. Then we have a little bit harder quests, the Western Hiram Mountains, and then the most difficult of the Hiram quests in the game right now, which are located in the Eastern Hiram Mountains at the very northeast of the map. So we're going to jump over into game and we're going to show you guys where each of these quests can be picked up so you know exactly where to go when you decide you want to start doing these dailies. So beginning with the easier quests first, we're starting over here in Exilock. We can see here all the way down where the NPCs are. We are here, we see this guy here, our Hiram Herald. He's going to offer us our first daily quest, which is a simple quest to kill 50 mobs in this zone, which will give us either a selection of five Hiram Awakening Scrolls or four unidentified Hiram Infusions. The next quest, which is exactly the same, just for a different zone, is over here in Sun Gold Fields. We can see here we're also at the NPC Traders. And we can see another Hiram Herald, he offers us the exact same quest. We have the selection of the five scrolls or the four infusions. Pretty easy quest. The next quest is over in the Diamond Shores zone. Over here we can see it's up by the uh, the bunch of portals. It's right close to the Missong Summit entrance over here. And it is from this NPC here, Drillmaster Rayson. So he will give you a quest that will reward you with three unidentified Hiram Infusions. It's a pretty average quest. I tend to skip this one myself, but it's good to know about it. And the final of what we're going to be calling the Tier 1 quests is over here in the Reedwind Zone. We can see here it's by the Crimson Watch Camp or in the Crimson Watch Camp. And it is another Hiram Herald here who will offer us a quest which is to kill 100 mobs in this zone which will give us a selection of either 10 Hiram Awakening Scrolls or 6 Unidentified Infusions. So quite a nice quest but 100 mobs you know, is one of the longer quests on the list. But after this we're going to be moving into some slightly more difficult quests that will give some better rewards. Okay, so the next bunch of quests that we have access to are all in the same zone. We have the Western Hiram Mountain Zone, which offers us three quests from NPCs in total. So we're going to show you guys where those are. So the first of the quests is just here in down near the Hiram Cave. So you'll talk to this guy here, Crimson Watch NCO, I guess is how you say that. And this quest will give you an option of either seven Radiant Hiram Awakening Scrolls or six Mysterious Hiram Infusions, which are this tier two infusions, which are quite good. So that is the first of the three quests in this zone. We then come over to the Illusion Cave area of Western Hiram Mountains, and we will find this guy here, Crimson Watch Luago. Lujo, however you want to say that, he will offer us two quests which are the exact same rewards as the previous two. So we can accept the one and then we can get the next one. The same rewards, the seven scrolls or the six infusions. All three 
of them are in the same zone, although they require you to kill different mobs. They're quite hefty with their rewards. Now, a quick side tip. This is available in the game as of right now. It has been since this released, and it shows no signs of going away anytime soon. But if you open up your marketplace, open up your marketplace and go over to the award tab, and then down to the gold sub tab, you will see these three free items here. They are Awakening Scroll Quest Starter, Mysterious Infusion Quest Starter, and Radiant Awakening Scroll Quest Starter. You can buy each of these for free. So we'll go ahead and we'll purchase all three of these. And once we've purchased them there, we notice they're completely free, doesn't change your thing. You can take them out of your marketplace and mail. Once you've done this, they will move to your bag in the form of items. So if we open our bag, we can see here, where's the first one? It's up here somewhere. So we have three quest starters in here. You just go ahead and right click them and they will each give you another quest with their own rewards for killing mobs in this zone. So they're all the exact same quest. Once you kill 50 mobs in this zone, which you're already going to do anyway, you will get their respective rewards. So you get an additional four scrolls an additional two Hiram Awakening, oh sorry, Mysterious Hiram Infusions, and then five regular Hiram Scrolls. So basically, it's just extra free juice just for a couple clicks on the marketplace. That's been there since this released, and like I said, shows no signs of going away. So make sure you're grabbing your market quests when you're doing your quests in this zone. But that's the end of what we're going to be calling our Tier 2 quests. We're going to move into the most difficult of the quests in today's video and available in the game today. So we're going to jump over to the new zone and show those. Alright, so we have made our way over to the Eastern Hiram Mountain zone. And the first quest we want to pick up is in the Waterfall Stairs area at the NPCs just above it. We see this guy, Waterfall Scout Leader Isora, and he is going to offer us a quest that will give us either... 10 Radiant Hiram Infusions, which are very nice, or 2 Brilliant Hiram Awakening Scrolls, which is the scroll you need to awaken to Tier 4, so also very nice, depending on your needs at the time. So that is the first quest in this zone, and this quest is probably the easiest of the four quests in this zone, but we're going to move on and show you guys where each of the next quests are. Alright, so the next daily quest in the Eastern Hiram Mountain Zone is at the Amasian Meadows camp which is just here just to the left of the Amasian Meadows we see this guy here another random NPC his name is Yagov and he is going to offer us one of the juiciest quests available to us which is going to give us either 20 radiant Hiram infusions or four brilliant Hiram awakening scrolls so this quest gives great rewards but it's easily the most difficult of the quests to solo Apart from the, the boss quests, it's just another kill 50 quests in this area. But the mobs themselves are very high star elite mobs. They're all in packs of 2 to 3. They have a lot of CC and they deal a lot of damage. So be very wary going into this solo if you're, you've never tried it before. I highly suggest doing this with a group unless you're very confident with your gear and your ability. Alrighty, so the next quest in the Eastern Hair Mountain Zone is in the Hall of Warriors, which is the big building in the zone. We can see this guy here, it's it's up here in the Hall of Warriors. You can see this guy here, Luia, however we want to say his name. He offers you a quest that just gives you five uh, brilliant Hiram Awakening Scrolls. This quest will require you to kill a small boss called the Millennium Mammoth, which we see here in front of us. He can spawn in one of two locations, which I've marked here on the map, so you can see We've got him to spawn in this location, and he can also spawn down in the south spawn there. He spawns on a five minute rotation, so once he dies, five minutes later, he'll either spawn here again or down in the southern spawn. And this is generally a highly contested area with a lot of people coming through trying to get this quest done. So I suggest going with a group to get this done, otherwise you may be here for a while trying to win over the tag, especially during peak hours. Now the final quest that we're going to be talking about today in this zone is at the Black Forest Camp, which we can see is just here on the map. Here's the Black Forest, the camp is right here, and we're going to be picking up this quest from Forest Scout Leader Soboron, or Soboron, however you want to say his name. And this quest will also give us five brilliant Awakening Scrolls. Now this quest is probably the toughest of all of the quests, especially 
if you're looking to solo them. But we can see the boss here on screen. He's a big purple bitch. He's pretty easy to see. This is the Black Forest Treant. He has four or five spawn locations all in this um, area in the Black Forest. But he's quite easy to sit find because of how bright and obnoxious he is. So you should have no trouble finding him. So that pretty much concludes all of the zone specific Hiram daily quests that you have access to. I will point out though that there are a number of other dailies that I would like to touch on that can give you Hiram rewards if you choose that. And those are your Crimson Rift and Grimgast Rift. If you're not new to Arcades, you should have a pretty good, good idea of what those are. You would have been doing them for Honor anyway. They give you infusion supply kits, which can be open to give either Hiram infusions or Abyssal Enhancers, which is for synthesizing dungeon gear and things like that. So that's also another good source of Hiram infusions. Both of those are, I think, a quest you can do daily, which give Honor and, like I said, those infusion supply kits. So those are really nice. There is also the Fall of Hiram City instance, which you can access via your instance um, menu down here or at a gladiator arena NPC if you don't have patron. It is in the raid tab in your instances. It is a simple 21 minute long um, instance where you have to defend refugees and drive packs and things like that. If you do well enough, you will get a reward at the end, which will be honor and then your selection of infusions. No, wait, no, wait. No, it will give you infusions and your selection of honor or either or vocation badges. So also another source of infusions if you want to spend the time doing that. It's quite the tedious uh, activity, but again, it's a nice source of infusions daily. And you can also acquire infusions from the Golden Plains battle, which is the old Halcyona battle, which is cross server PVP arena now. So you can go into your Golden Plains, participate in that and Depending on your placement, you will get a number of infusion supply kits, just like the ones you get from Grimgas Rift and Crimson Rift, and you can open those to give yourself more Hiram infusions. So another really good source, you can do this up to two times per day, which we can give you anywhere from, depending on what place your faction gets, 10 or so infusions to up to, I think, like 30-ish. So if you're in a nice faction and you're winning these Golden Plains battles, they can be a really nice source of infusions for your progress. And lastly, we have the Drill Camp Arena, which is the new 5v5 to 10v10 arena with balanced gear. If you acquire victory, you'll get your badges plus some infusion supply kits. If you get a defeat, you'll get less badges and less infusion supply kits, but you get them nonetheless. So this is, although it's a small source of supply kits, it is another source of infusions, and if you do enough of them, you can do five per day free and get up to, what's that, 15 infusion kits if you win all of them. So queue into your drill camp arenas. If you like PvP, this is a good way to, you know, enjoy some nice arena times as well as nail some infusions. So a great source there as well. So to those of you who stuck around to the end of the video, I have a little bit of bonus advice that goes out specifically to people who are just starting their Hiram grind and are trying to fill in their slots with all the pieces they need for their build. So the first time you go around and do each of your dailies, you will complete achievements, which I, for the life of me, can't find in this shit show of a UI. But believe me, the achievements are there, and each time you complete a specific number of daily quests that are Hiram related, you will get bonus rewards every time those achievements are met. And they're just simply, you know, complete one daily Hiram, complete two, complete three, complete five, 10, 20, and then it goes all the way up until however far it goes. But the very first few that you complete will give you rewards such as these ones here. So we can see here that I have a cloaked Hiram Guardian armor. Now this, unlike the drops we get from the mob specific, are only acquirable through these achievements. And if you see, I can click it here and it will let me choose a specific piece of any kind of armor, whether it's cloth, leather, or plate. So whatever piece you need specifically, you can choose to get that piece, uncloak it, and it will uncloak that specific piece with the stats on it. You will also get the same thing for instruments and you will also get them for weapons. Although I've used my weapon ones, so I can't actually show you guys them right now. You will also get weapons for this as well. Now, I suggest, especially if you're starting out with your Hiram stuff, once you get these, don't get excited and unseal them right away. 
wait until you're a little bit into your Hiram grind and you have majority of your pieces because at the end of that it's going to be more difficult for you to fill in the necessary slots because you may have six out of seven leather pieces and you just need that jerkin to fill it in but every time you open a new leather piece it's just not the jerkin and it's re it will really get to you so i suggest saving these kind of pieces until you need them to fill in the last slots or maybe you know you're just not getting the right stats on an important piece you can use these to kind of increase your odds and help you out so hold on to them for as long as you feel comfortable and use them when it's necessary because these are a little bit of a cheat through the RNG factor of the Hiram stuff and they will really help you if you use them correctly so keep your eye out for them don't waste them and make sure that you're using them correctly but but you should know about it and these are super helpful when beginning your Hiram grind. But that's pretty much it for this guide guys. I know this was a super long video and it took me a really long time to put together everything and edit it all. So I really appreciate anyone who likes, comments or subscribes. If you're feeling really generous, I just recently made a Patreon so head over there and show me some support there. But otherwise, if you haven't already joined my Discord, I'll leave a link in the description. It's a great place for new and returning players to ask questions. We have tons of people in there who are more than willing to help you out with anything you might be curious about if you can't find the answer already on my channel. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.